Seventh Psalm says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us. And certainly that's what we want, God. We need God's mercy. We need God to be merciful unto us and bless us. And then look on us, O oh God, and cause your face to shine upon us. And even as we're gathering for our worship service, that's the prayer that we're putting up before the Lord. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Savior, for your mercy, O oh God. Hallelujah. For your goodness and for your grace, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we're coming before you, God. Even as the psalmist said, God, be merciful unto us. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, extend your mercy to us, O oh God. We need your mercy, O oh God. Hallelujah. Be merciful unto us. But God, we're asking that you not stop there, God but that you bless us, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we need your blessings, oh God. We need your mercy, oh God. Cause your face to shine upon us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we come before your presence, oh God. We're asking you, oh God, that everybody under the sound of my voice, God, regardless of what their condition or what their circumstance is, God, we're asking, oh God, for you to move mightily, oh God. God. Our eyes are on you, God. Our attention is on you, O oh God. God, be merciful unto us, O oh God. And bless us, O oh God. And cause your face to shine upon us, O oh God. Oh God, bless us, oh God. Bless the praise and worship. Bless the word, oh God. Even as it goes out, oh God. In the name of Jesus, uh, let it touch the hearts and the ears. Uh, let it bring healing to the minds and the soul and the body, oh God. In the matchless name of Jesus. Uh, and we'll forever praise you. We'll give you glory, oh God. Because you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to ex be exalted. You're worthy to be matched magnified in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name we thank you hallelujah bless your name Jesus bless your name hallelujah come on and bless the Lord with me and let us exalt his name Oh, yeah. 
come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Your love is unconditional. Thank you for your reckless love. Hallelujah. We honor you, Jesus. There's none like you in all the earth. Hallelujah. And we're so honored and privileged, hallelujah, to receive your love.
God for this day. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord God, because you are a spirit and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray that my speech nor my preaching will be with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that the faith of these your people will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Move in a mighty way, Lord God. Lord, pour out your faith and your power. Lift up the broken hearts, Lord. Touch the sin, the bodies, Lord. Move in a mighty way. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I would like to take a moment just to speak to you out of the Word of God, as found in the book of Romans chapter 15, verses 13 and 14. And the Apostle Paul wrote, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. So as Paul is closing out this very strategic letter to the saints in Rome, and at this point he has not traveled to Rome yet, he's heard about their faith. And in this book, he carries a whole lot of power pack revelations. And what he wanted them to know was that you have something to share with others. And what you have to share is hope. And what I would like to talk about for just a moment is being a hope dispenser. You are here to dispense hope in this dying and wicked world. And with all the uncertainty around us, those of us who know the Lord, those of us who have testimonies and experiences with God, we need to take ownership of it and share it with others with confidence. Paul starts off in this chapter in um, uh, Romans 15, and he talks that in verse 1, that we that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not please ourselves, that we should look out for others around us in our families, our friends, associates, and neighbors, and, and those who are weak, those who are downcast, those who are lonely, we should try to bridge the gap for them and build them up. We are not to please ourselves and point, point the finger and criticize other people and put them down, but use our strength, use our knowledge of the word, use our testimony to build others up and reconnect them, and particularly now more than ever. You know, isolation, loneliness, and depression can be a major challenge in people's lives. And, pe and particularly when you look at the economy, the layoffs, when you look at the virus and how it's affecting internationally, when you look at just the uncertainty of tomorrow. But we know the God of hope. We know the God that holds the whole future in his hand. We know the God who is a healer and a way maker. We know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that makes a major difference. It's been written that loneliness is one of the most common mental health problems and that one quarter of Americans feel extremely lonely at some time during the month. Just within a 30-day period, one quarter of people feel extremely lonely. Loneliness is a painful awareness that we lack close and meaningful contact with others. It's a feeling of inner emptiness, isolation, intense longing. Now, some loneliness is transient and situational and other loneliness can be considered chronic or long-lasting. And it's not unnatural to experience loneliness or depression from time to time. But for as believers, we have received Jesus as Lord and Savior. We have received the hope of God in our hearts. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the word of God, through the testimonies, we are here to dispel loneliness, to reconnect people, to let people know that God cares for them and allow the joy that God has put in our hearts to be shared with others. This joy that we have, the world didn't give it to us and the world can't take it away. It's something that's not based upon our employment status. It's not based upon our credit rating. It's based upon our names being written in heaven, that Jesus came and died for you and I and shared his blessed, precious blood that we might be born again and washed. And as a result, we have joy. Now, when I think about even the word hope, 
Hope is a powerful word. And out of the acronym of HOPE, H-O-P-E, I have come up with a definition. H stands for happiness, that God desires for us to be happy. Now, I know some people want to say there's a difference between happiness and joy, that happiness means something had to happen. Well, yeah, something did happen. God came from heaven. He died on the cross. He rose on the third day, and he's opened up the treasures of heaven for each and every one of us. And as a result of that great happening, that great getting up morning of Jesus resurrecting from the dead and the Lord pouring out his gifts in our lives and giving us the opportunity to repent and know him, and personally, that testimony is life changing and it brings joy. The Bible says in Proverbs 10 and verse 28, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. That means the expectation of the righteous shall be gladness. And, and this word gladness means glee. It's like merriment, um, where we get Merry Christmas from, to be exultant, to have a high spirited of joy, to be lighthearted, to brighten up the room. Uh, we should be the ones that can brighten up the room with our enthusiasm, with our optimism, with our gladness. Uh, David even wrote in the fourth Psalm and the seventh verse that, Lord, you have made me glad in my heart more than those of the time of the corn and the wine. What he was saying that even after the great harvest that they would have and the festivals they would have after the harvest, he had more joy in his heart from the Lord than all the wine bibbers and all the drinkers out there who were excited about having a great crop. Do you know when God comes down on the inside, he will give you gladness and, and the Lord will banish the blues. He will banish the sadness as we look to him. And so that H of hope is happiness or gladness that comes not from just our situation, but it comes from the Lord. The Lord pours out gladness in our hearts. He will touch your heart and give you a gleeful, lighthearted enthusiasm that will allow you to go through your day looking forward versus looking down, looking upward versus looking down. And so that H represents happiness. The O, in my mind, thinks of optimistic. An optimistic person is someone who chooses to look on the bright side, who is someone who is looking forward to good things happening and actually expecting good things to happen. Now we have a choice. We can be pessimistic or we can be optimistic. I believe that optimism offsets more than offsets pessimism. In other words, when you hear people negative, always complaining, always pointing the finger, always criticizing, that can sow a lot of poison and a lot of doubt and a lot of fear. But do you know what? When someone is optimistic, when someone is speaking positive, that carries power also. I was recently in the cleaners and I was talking to the person and I had pretty much forgot that my clothes were in the cleaners. And uh, he was like, boy, things are really shut down and, and who knows what the future will be. And after I left, I thought about it and I said, I should have interjected a little more hope in my conversation because I'm really not concerned about tomorrow. I really know that the Lord has our lives in his hands and this thing is going to turn for good because all things work together for good to them that love God. So the next time I interacted with someone, I was a lot more positive in interjecting that I've heard reports of people being healed. I know that God is moving. I know the Lord is going to shift this economy. I know the Lord cares for each and every one of us. And the Bible lets us know in the book of Proverbs that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so as believers, we should be deliberate about being optimistic. We just can't go with the flow of just the facts and the flow of people's feelings. And yes, there are many people who are feeling lonely and depressed and isolated. And those of us who love the Lord, we should be deliberate to connect with them and to share with them the good news that God is in control, that God cares for you. You know, another aspect of that word um, optimism is opulent. And opulent means wealthy. And it's interesting that optimism is rooted in wealth and riches. It's not rooted in lack and fear and, and destruction. It's rooted in life. 
is rooted in building up versus tearing down. And we got to know that God is on the throne and that our Lord is rich. Our father is rich, right? As the songwriter said, in houses and lands, he holds the power of the world in his hands. And thank God he still answers prayer. Thank God that he still hear our cry. And as believers, we must be very deliberate about being determined to stand on his promises. All his promises are yea and amen. That means yes, he can. Yes, he's able. Yes, he will. And amen means so be it. Have your way, Lord. I yield to your will, not my will, but let thine will be done. So hope is powerful because hope will push us beyond our feelings. Our feelings can cause us to be down or, or cause us to look negative. But then when we look to God, when we look to his word, when we look at the testimonies of the saints in the Bible, when we allow the Holy Spirit to, to really touch our hearts, we will be lifted up. We will be brightened. And then we can also be deliberate about brightening the day of other people. And that's with our words and with our attitude. We cannot just be driven by circumstances. We got to be driven by the power of God's word. And that P in hope means to persevere, to be persistent, to take a hold of what God has said and not let go. I'm reminded in Romans chapter four, when it talks about um, uh, Abraham, how who against hope believed in hope. And that's a powerful statement right there. In other words, he wanted to become a father of many nations. He wanted God's prophecy to come to pass in his life. But guess what? He got older and older and older, and it didn't seem like it was going to happen. But his faith took a hold of the person who made the promise, God, who called those things that be not as though they were. And he held on. He had to fight against those doubts in his mind, and he had to make up in his mind, I'm going going to trust God. I'm going to stand on his promise. I'm going to believe God. And the Bible says in verse 18 of Romans 4, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And part of our perseverance is to learn how to make peace with time. Because many times we have to wait. And sometimes it might even get worse before it gets better. But guess what? God's word will never fail. God cannot lie. God has given us too many examples in his word of his faithfulness that he will see you through and he will bring you through. And so we got to take hold and be tenacious and not let go. Just like Abraham. Abraham. He's called the father of faith because he took hold of that word. He owned it and he gave God praise. He gave God glory. And even though he became a hundred years old, and this was a good 13, 14 years after he received the initial prophecy, he held on to God and believed God. And that's so important for you and I, for us to persevere, for us to be persistent in believing God for the best possible outcome and allow that joy and that glee and that cheer cheerfulness to really fuel ourselves each and every day because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And then the Lord also showed the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 5, the very next chapter, he talks about some components that relates to this perseverance. And it says here, in verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing also that tribulation worketh patience. So our troubles, our challenges, uh, the crisis that we face will work patience, will give us that perseverance, will give us that ability to endure hardness as good soldiers and to stand. And you know what? We got to allow patience to have its perfect work. There's no such thing as the gift of patience. There's no such thing even as the fruit, you know, we have the fruit of long suffering and we don't want to celebrate long suffering too much because we don't want to suffer long. We generally want to suffer like that and call it a day. But that's part of the spirit being in our lives is our ability to suffer long, to endure hardness, to have that persevering ability to press on towards the mark and to trust God through the power of his grace. And so trouble works patience. But then guess what patience will do? Patience gives us a testimony. Patience gives us experience. Patience allows us to be able to say, God is a healer. 
God is a way maker. God is a door opener. God has given me wisdom. God poured out favor in my life. We have a real bona fide experience with God and we overcome the enemy through the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. And so out of our testimony, guess what our testimony will give us? Hope, hope. We then begin to have that expectation and that desire for the fulfillment of God's word because we have gone through some trouble and we have persevered and now we have a testimony and that testimony has birthed within us strength to trust God for all of his promises to happen. And the Bible says here in verse five, hope maketh not a shame. When you have hope in God, when you're trusting God, when you're standing on the promises of God and enduring hardness as a good soul, you won't be ashamed. You won't be ashamed that you're living holy. You won't be ashamed that you're living right. You won't be ashamed that you're a Christian. You won't be ashamed that your name is written in heaven. You won't be ashamed that you've made choices to live holy and to lift up the Lord. You won't be ashamed that you are giving your tithes and offerings. You won't be ashamed to be identified with those who are sanctified because you have experience with God and you know that he's real. And hope maketh not a shame. Hope brings boldness. Hope brings a backbone. You have backbone. You have a confidence that God will see you through. Hallelujah. And why are we not ashamed? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in and he begins to operate on your heart. He begins to circumcise your heart. He begins to take out that stoniness. He begins to take out envy and jealousy. He begins to take out everything that's not like God and give you the ability to love the Lord and to love your neighbor as you love yourself and be able to rest in God and have contentment with God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding will keep your heart in mind. Thank God for the power of his love because when you love the Lord you won't have to fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. Praise God and the gifts of the spirit and the power of the spirit it operates through love. Praise the Lord and so as a result of trouble as a result of trials and tests, amen, we gain uh, experience and we gain patience and we gain hope and hope gives us boldness through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that E represents expectation. Hallelujah. That we are looking forward to what God is going to do. And it gives us the ability to continue to press. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the majesty on high. What it's letting us know is that Jesus, who is the author of our faith, and he's the finisher, he's going to complete everything that he's promised, he's going to bring us through. He had hope, he believed God, that God was going to hear his cry and that he would be resurrected, and he endured the cross. Just think he was beaten with all those stripes for our healing. Just think that he was nailed to the tree and pierced in the side, but when he hung his head and died, he died in hope. When he said it is finished, he died in hope. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he discounted the shame. He discounted the pain. He discounted all that because he knew that God was going to bring him out and bring him through. And didn't God do it? On the third day, he rose again with all power in his hand. And his name is above every name of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth. And we got to do the same thing. We got to discount sometimes the pain and the challenges and the trials and the tests that we go through in this life, knowing that as we go through these trials, God has something better on the other side, that God will see us through, that all things will work together for good. So H is happiness. O is optimistic. P is uh, we're going to persevere. We're going to persist. And then E is expectation. And so the God of hope, God owns hope. You can't have any hope unless Jesus is your Lord and Savior. God controls time. God controls events. And he is the God of hope. And he wants all of us to be cheerful, to have a calm delight and to trust him and that he will fill us all. And Paul's prayer was that he will fill us with joy and peace 
in believing. Joy and peace are two non-negotiable things that all believers should possess in their lives, regardless of what's going on every day. Because see, when you have joy down on the inside, hey, the world didn't give it to you and the world cannot take it away. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And that's why every day we should have a moment to give God glory, honor, and praise. And do you know, sometimes it cannot even be something deliberate. You can just come up across an old letter or you can catch yourself looking at a picture or looking and it takes you down a road praise God and you begin to think about what God has done how he brought you out how he brought you through and you can go ahead and have a praise moment amen thank God if you're in an environment where you can turn some music on but you don't always have to have music to give God praise you should throw up your hands and say thank you Lord when I look back 10 years ago five years ago yesterday last week how you answered prayer, I'm going to give you glory. And I want you to know the Lord steps into those praises. He inhabits the praises of his people. And he wants us to walk with joy and happiness each and every day. And then secondly is the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Oh, I tell you, if we look at the facts, praise God, the facts may say that we are crazy to be having all this joy down in our hearts. But do you know why? We are able to have peace and joy because God is on the throne and the Lord gives us his peace. His peace which passeth all understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we're standing here because the Lord has made a way. We have joy. We have peace. We have confidence. We have hope because God continues to make a way and continues to strengthen us. And praise God for that. And so the apostle was praying that the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may what? Abound in hope. In other words, overflow with hope. You should, we we should have such an overflow of expectation and optimism and, and our ability to expect that we can share it with other people, that we can be kind to other people. Do you know that you can be complimentary to somebody? You can tell someone that they look nice, that you enjoyed their words, you enjoyed their look, you enjoyed their smile. We should share compliments with people and not hold back, you know? Sometimes people only want to compliment somebody when they get a compliment. They say, your hair looks good. Oh yeah, I like your hairstyle too. You know, it shouldn't be a tit for tat type of thing where you're always trying to get from someone else. When you're walking in hope and joy, you can be a blessing. You can be an encouragement to other people and lift them up and let them know it's good to see them. Speak a word of faith and hope. Lift, build them up with your words. Build them up with the word of faith and the word of truth. Call them, text them, you know, let them know that you're thinking about them. And that's what we should be, our despair dispensers of hope. One a serious critical point in the Apostle Paul's career is found in the book of Acts. And um, we're just going to refer to it. We won't read it fully. But in Acts 27, he was on a ship and he was on his way to Rome um, to, to be tried. And he had already warned the, the sailor and the captain and everyone that, you know, I don't feel good about this trip. I believe we're going to come across a lot of harm on the way. But they didn't listen to him because he was in chains. He was a prisoner. And they took off. And according to the word of God, they ended up in a tempest. And this tempest was horrible. And for 14 straight days, they didn't even see the light of day. And they began to throw off the tackling on the ship. And they were fearing for their lives. And they stopped eating. And it was just so horrible. Everyone on the boat thought that they would die. But then the Bible says, picking up at verse 20 of Acts 27, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appear and no small tempest lay on us all hope that we should be saved was then taken away so they lost all their hope but after long abstinence Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said sirs you should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from creep to have gained this harm and loss and now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be told, it shall be even as it was told me. 
So Paul heard from heaven. Paul heard from the angel. And when man has lost all hope based upon facts, he had hope based upon faith. And that's what we're all about today. Our hope is not based upon the facts. Our hope is based upon faith in God. Yeah, they have models out there saying how many people may die, how many people may be affected in terms of the virus, how many jobs have been lost. But guess what? We have faith in God, that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, that God can do far beyond man and our hope is built on God and his word. Paul told those people on the boat I've heard from heaven it's going to be all right we're going to go to a certain island and in fact he stood there declared the word and then asked for some food because he said I'm going to live praise God I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord and do you know that hope that he spoke to those people was contagious the fear that they had for those 14 days was removed they all began to eat and even the captain who was over him when the ship became shipwrecked and fell apart and they were thinking about what to do with the, with the slaves and with the prisoners, he said, no, let them all find something and get to the island. Don't kill anyone. And he spared Paul's life and God truly allowed Paul to go to Rome. I want you to know that God is true to his word and our hope is based on God. And see, the apostle Paul went on in Romans 15 and 14 to say, you know what? You have received from the Lord knowledge and goodness, and you should admonish other people, gently warn them, encourage them, build them up, take ownership of this hope that you have and use it to build other people up. Don't keep it for yourself. Hallelujah. Hope maketh not a shame. See, the devil wants to use our circumstances to cause our feelings to be down and our perception to bring ourselves down saying, oh, the future is just a mess. No our future is bright hallelujah and absolutely fabulous why because the holy spirit will infuse us with strength to get up hallelujah he gives us getting up power he's the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead he's the one that will give us strength to get up and pray get up and praise god get up and study the word get up and share your testimony get up hallelujah and encourage your family and friends hallelujah and be an encouragement that's what it's all about today it's for us to share the hope that's in God, the hope that we have in the Lord through our optimism, through our encouragement, through our compliments, that the joy and peace of the Holy Ghost will abound in our lives. The songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. And so we thank God for the God of hope. He is the God of hope. And may he fill us all with joy and peace in believing that we will be brimming and flowing in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we will dispense hope. We will share hope. We will be pillars of hope through the power of God. That's my prayer for you today, that regardless of what you may be going through, God sees you and God will bring you through. We're only standing here because he has made a way and he's going to continue to make a way. He's going to continue to open doors. He's going to continue, hallelujah, to pour out his favor upon his people. Hallelujah. We got to take ownership of who we are and whose we are. And like the apostle Paul on that ship, he said, I know who I am. I know who I serve. I'm not defined by these chains. I'm not defined by being a prisoner. I'm an apostle. My name is written in heaven and God sent a messenger to let me know everything's going to be all right. And I'm here to let you know it's going to be all right. He's going to bring us through the dark times. He's going to bring us through the crisis. He's going to bring us through the challenges because he is the God of hope. And he's here now to strengthen each and every one of us and lift up our heads. And I choose not to be pessimistic. I choose not to be negative. I choose not to be down. I choose not to be depressed. I choose not to be sad. I choose to be glad. Hallelujah. Because Jesus have made me glad and Jesus is 
is good. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I want to encourage you, hallelujah, to lift up your head and trust in his name. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you. Glory to your name. We thank you for hope. Hallelujah. Fill us the more with your hope, oh God. Let your joy and peace abound in us, Lord. And let us not keep it to ourselves. But Lord, let us share with others. Let us admonish others that there is a way, that there is a God, that you are true, that you are real, that you've brought us this far and you're not going to leave us. Thank you, Lord God, that you love us. Thank you, Lord, that you have blessings for us. Press down, shaking together and running over. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you for hope. Thank you for the power of hope. You gave Abraham hope and he endured and you blessed him with that miracle baby. Hallelujah. You blessed the Apostle Paul to stand even in the midst of the storm. Use us in the midst of this storm. Use us in the midst of this crisis. Use us, Lord, to have that prophetic word of faith. Hallelujah. And let us choose to take control of our tongue. Let us choose to speak life and good over death and evil. Let us choose to speak the prophetic versus the facts of man in the name of Jesus and we thank you hallelujah we thank you even now we praise you even now hallelujah you brought us this far not to leave us but for us to abound and we praise you now hallelujah 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 in Jesus name amen thank you Jesus glory to God amen.
He's worthy to be praised and magnified. He's worthy to be lifted up. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. On this Palm Sunday, on this day where we recognize Jesus being uh, glorified as he entered into Jerusalem, we want to make sure that we give him glory, honor, and praise. When some of the people complained to Jesus, he said, do you know the very stones will cry out? It was a moment where all creation recognized the creator and the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And let it be that in our lives, praise God, we will lift up Jesus and sing Hosanna to the king. Send now prosperity. Save now, O oh God. Have your way in our midst. That despite all that's going on in the world you are king of kings and lord of lords and we are going to give you praise and so i want to encourage you to continue to praise the lord be a dispenser of hope he is the god of hope and let the joy of the lord be your strength and let the peace of god which passeth all understanding keep your heart and minds through christ jesus we're here to spread cheer we're here to spread glee we're here to spread joy and let that be so this week as we continue to lift up the name of Jesus thank you so much for tuning in to hallelujah temple I want to encourage you with your gifts that you can give through givelify which is an app that you can just download and look up hallelujah temple in Park Forest Illinois or you can send in your check to hallelujah temple one dogwood street Park Forest Illinois 60466 God, God said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, and running over shall men give into your bosoms. I trust that you've been strengthened today, and I pray that you will share this with your friends and family and loved ones, because truly this is the time to go forward with hope, to be not ashamed, and to allow the love of God to be shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Truly, the best is yet to come. Let us pray. Lord, bless these your people. Keep us, Lord. Let us be shining lights, Lord, even in these last and evil days. You are the God of hope. Fill us with all joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah Temple is a religious, nonprofit organization. Our heartfelt thanks goes to everyone who continues to support this ministry, whether through Givelify, or by mail at 1 Dogwood Street, Park Forest, Illinois, 60466. Your contribution to Hallelujah Temple helps further the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Stay connected to us through our Facebook page for more words from our leadership.